Hi guys and welcome back. Uh, tonight, or now, whenever you're watching it, I'm showing you how to make a magnetic fishing game with your embroidery machine. I actually just stumbled across this and went, oh my god, my kid will love it. So, I am going to show you how I make this. Um, yeah, so the fish, I'm just going to show you one, obviously not five, and then I will show you how to both make all the pieces, join the thread, and construct the pole. Uh, but bear with me because I do burn myself on the glue a little bit. Alright, so if you'd like to see how to make this, right, please stay tuned. We're going to start with the sinker. Uh, sorry, the float, not the sinker. We don't have a sinker. Right, so I've just put in an empty frame, and I've put white in because I want to use white. And this is going to stitch out the outline, so then we can place our sinker piece. Floatier piece. Oh my god, I keep saying sinker. So then again, I'm going to take just a dash of that basting spray and spray that on there. And then I'm going to place it right on the edge of those lines. So the size that we cut is exactly the size that we need for there. And then I'm going to stitch that down again. So we're just going to put that down and that's going to stitch it in place for us. You can see off to the side of my screen, it's showing you what we're stitching, and there is actually a little green arrow that moves around showing you where we're up to, which is kind of fun too. Okay, so now I'm going to change this to red so that we have a red sinker. And this is going to colour in the sinker part. Really? Uh, my machine has an automatic needle threader, which can I just say I absolutely love. So it's going to lay down at what's called an underlay stitch. Um, so what this does is it helps to prevent uh, bunching in designs it probably wouldn't really bunch felt but something like a cotton or even a denim if it's stitching a really big design and it doesn't have an underlay you're likely to get kind of puckering marks so this helps prevent that uh, so it says it's only going to take two minutes which it might i'm not sure um, so now that it's on the underlay, it tends to stitch in the opposite direction for the full fill effect. And this one will be a lot closer together. So as you can see, it's kind of going in the circle shape to create the fill look. So my speed is currently set to 600. This machine does go all the way up to 1000. Uh, but I, I very rarely run it there because usually it's going so fast it breaks its thread on itself, which I think is a little bit silly. Um, and I've had it serviced and it's just what the machine does. So I usually sit it at 600 and I'll only slow it down to 300 if I'm sewing a vinyl um, or if I want to sew over something. So we have to put some string in here, but because I'm using the jute cord, I don't really need to worry about the thickness of this to stitch over so I'll keep it at the 600 but if I was using a thicker cord I would sew it slower so it's less likely to snap my needle so that's coming along quite nicely it's actually nearly done so the last stitch is going to both hold this in place as well as stitch the back on so while that's doing that I need to measure 10 inches from what we've decided is the bottom which is here, and this is where I want to put this. So I'm going to take the hoop out, and I'm going to flip it over, and that's the 10 inches there. So I want this, I want the longer side up the top, because then we're going to attach our um, hook to that end. So that's where I want it. So I'm just going to put two pieces of masking tape, and I pretty much always have masking tape on my machine very rare that I don't to be honest 
So that's that piece on. Then we're going to grab another one of our backs and that's going to stick on over the top. So again, we're going to use some basting spray. So we literally just want the cord to run straight through the middle. Now to squish this together, I'm going to put my hand there so that I'm not warping my stabilizer too much. Then flip it over and I'm going to push it down again just to hopefully make sure it's really, really stuck. And then make sure that I've got the excess cord completely out of my way. So I've got that bit there and I've got the other bit making sure it's not tucked up under. And then we're just going to do this final stitch. And I'm going to do it in red on the top. Because I think it'll look nice is actually why I'm doing it in red. called a bean stitch where it stitches back and forth over the same area um, and the reason it's doing that is to help stabilize it and make it like a nice strong bond because this is only a round thread which is not the strongest this is actually looking quite lovely that's all done so my machine will make the finished noise and then go back to the center of the design and so then I'm gonna flip this over and take off the masking tape because I can use this several times before it dies on me and then if I just push it should just pop out like so now you might see that there was like a thread there that was from our placement stitch so our, our, not sinker, our float is now on. So I'm going to now grab another hoop that I have already prepared. And we're now going to do the hook on this same piece. So I need to get up the hook design, which I've got on my USB. So I'm just opening that to the side. That's what you can see happening. Um, and I won't need red for this, but I will be making a gray hook. And I'll be doing all the other stitching in white. So I've got white in my bobbin. Um, with the fish, as I changed coloured fish and the thread, so my top and bottom threads both matched. So to do that, all I did was wind some colours onto an empty bobbin because I have a lot of them. All right, so let's do the placement stitch first. And I'm also just going to trim this little edge here to make it even because that will annoy me. And that most likely happened because it moved when I was putting it under the machine. But it's fine. See? All fixed. Right, so that's our placement stitch. So we're going to grab one of the circles. Um, and I plan on making a few of these as presents. So I've actually got a whole pile cut out next to me. Uh, so if I wasn't recording this, I'd be hooping another blank piece of stabilizer right now uh, to get ready. And I would have done all of all of the floaters first and then gone and done all of the hooks just so I don't have to change the design as often. I'm just going to thread, oh the machine's already threaded, duh. All right so this will be a placement stitch. You also do have to come and just trim off the tails because they, they always still have tails, they're just not very long. Now we're going to put the hook on. So the hook I'm doing in this grey. Um, so I use a lot of different threads. I'm not, I'm not really picky on my threads. I like rayon, but I do buy polyester. So my black and white are polyester, and my colours are rayon. I think rayon's a little bit more shiny, but I also think that polyester is potentially a little bit stronger and can withstand vinyl better. In saying that, I still use all of my rayons on vinyl. I just find I tend to have more snappage. So, that colour is now in, so now it's going to do the hook. So this is called a satin stitch, is what it's going to do. Oh, apparently it's going to cap. 
much. So when this catches, and it does happen sometimes, I'll put it up here and let it run. So it'll pull it, but it'll stop catching. And because if it catches, it snaps the thread, and then you have to go and redo everything. So this little hook here, you've got always got to make sure it's pulling it at, like under and not over the top though. Uh, it doesn't like pulling it over the top, apparently it's bad for it. Also I got informed by somebody at the shop, that could be misinformation, I don't know, but I just do what I'm told, so I always have it going under. It also works when you get close to the end of a spool, sometimes the end can get in the way, um, so if you do this, you get the whole spool with minimal breakage. Alright, so there's my hook. Now, I don't want to have to hand stitch. I'm not even going to lie about this. So, I've worked out a way where I don't have to. So, the first thing we need to do is take our magnet, which is here somewhere, although my child may have taken it before I was recording. Let me go get a magnet. I've got, these are very, very strong magnets. I got them from Bunnings. You can buy them in packs of, I think it was like six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of my E6000 glue, which you can also get from Spotlight. It is insanely strong and bonds everything to everything. So I'm going to just put a little bit of E6000 glue, and I'm going to put this right at the hook. Now, the reason you'll want to use this glue is because it's got, it's a thicker glue. So it's less likely that that's going to shift, which we don't want. I'm also going to put a dab on the back as well. And so that's going to hold our back piece on. And if the stabilizer here ever tears, it's not a big deal. And I put the lid back on this glue because it is very expensive. That tube was $18, just so people know. So then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to pop it on there like so. And then I'm going to take my masking tape and then just right on the edge, I'm going to put the masking tape. So I'm going to try not to sew through it, but I also really want to make sure that this is going to stay while I'm stitching. So I'm just putting it right on the edge and then I'm going to flip it in my hand and push so that I'm not disturbing. I can even push it on here like that push it all down and so then again we're going to slot it under and I'm going to go back to the stitch that went all the way around which is stitch number two and then I'm going to switch this out and put white back again now you could do a colored um, thread but I don't want to see this I just want to see a hook dangling and I've just realized I nearly forgot to put the thread in. So before I get carried away, because I'm definitely doing that, we're going to pull this out and we want to take our other piece and I'm going to put this in as well. So I'm just going to lift this up, find where the hook comes in and have it enter where the hook does like that. So now once it stitches the thread's going to come directly out of where the hook would be so it's going to sit up the correct way. Um, you don't have to do that but it's just what I want to do. If I'm going to do it I may as well do it well. So it's actually going to kind of sit out on an angle. It's not going to come directly down like the other one did. So again I'm going to pop that in, needle down, get it threaded and then we're going to go around. Now, if you are worried because you're using a thicker thread, just slow your machine down. Um, or if you want to, you can manually stitch this on. I just won't be. Um, it's doing a little kind of a backup stitch there, which is also fine. Because realistically, if the magnet was going anywhere, it would be down. So there you go. And then... Again, we take the tape off first before we start ripping at things. And I did stitch the tiniest amount of tape, uh, but it wasn't a lot, so it didn't snap anything, which is awesome. So then we're just going to pull that out. And so now we have our sinker and our float. And now all we need to do is go and attach it to our pole. 
I've got a piece of dowel from Bunnings and I chopped it in half. So from one piece of dowel, and these are the shorter ones that live like in and not standing up, from one piece of dowel you get two rods and they are pretty much 60 centimeters, give or take a few mil, depending on how good you are at cutting perfectly in half. So we obviously, we've got this part going on down here. So we've got our float and our hook which looks a little bit twisted, which will annoy me if it is, because I put a lot of effort into it and not. So, oh, I just pulled that out. That's even worse. Right, so the idea is that this is going to come out the end, and to stick that down, we want to use a hot glue gun. So now that I've just reefed that out of there, what I'm going to have to do now is unpick there. Actually, I don't even have to unpick. I can get my hand in there. So I'm just going to stuff that back in, and I will just stitch over it with my machine a little bit. Um, obviously it wasn't quite as strong as I hoped, but that's okay. That'll be on that end, not this end. Whoops. So now what we want to do is we want to have this coming out the end like that. And when my hot glue gun heats up a little bit more. Yes, I'm insane because yes, I touched it. I'm that person. I have to know now. Right, so the idea is, is we want this to come out the end like this and then we kind of want to wrap it. So I kind of want to come up and down. I don't know. I want it to come out the end, but I also want to wrap it around here. So maybe if I start here, go up, then round and I'll end up at the end. Oh, that'll work. So let's do that. So when this finally heats up enough to squeeze out some glue, we'll be fine. I also need to shove the next one in. Oh, but it keeps falling out, which is also super annoying. I think we are getting... Oh, there it goes. Right, we are getting somewhere. A whole chunk of glue just went in. There we go. So... It was actually just stuck, not cold. I thought it was taking too long. So I'm going to put this piece down like that into the glue. And then I'm also going to put it on the opposite side to come back down to the start. And I'm only doing about, about an inch is what they recommend. So then I'm just going to kind of zigzag some glue both sides here. If you make it thick enough, it'll stay warm enough while we wrap. So I'm just going to wrap it next to each other, nice and tight and close. Like this, just to cover the end. I'm going to add some extra on the end. And that way the, the thread is going to come off the end and be a fishing rod. See, look at that. Um, I don't necessarily recommend touching the glue. Uh, but I do have a little bit kind of poking out. So as it gets colder, you can touch it more and just kind of squish it to make sure it's really holding on to that rope. Although if you wound it tight enough, it should be fine. And then you've got your fishing pole and all your fish, which my child already ran off with. Here we go. So I made him five little fish. And I've just changed the colour of the thread every now and again. So this has got a purple thread. Um, those three all have like a dark, deep red. And then this one has dark green, just for something different. So all the fish look a little bit different, even though they're the same. And they all worked out great. And that's a whole set. And it really doesn't cost that much to make. And my kid's obsessed. He loves them. So there you go. I hope that was helpful, guys. And until next time. Bye-bye.